John, welcome back. Thanks for joining us this morning. Martha just said it could take a while to figure out where these three objects were from. What more do we know about them? What were they? Were they balloons? Were they from China? Yeah. We're not describing them as balloons right now, George. We're, we're calling them uh, uh, objects because that's the, that's the best description we have right now. What I can tell you is they were very much smaller than the Chinese spy balloon, uh, in cases about the size of a car. Uh, they did not appear to have any maneuvering capability, so they weren't didn't look like they were piloted or anything like that. Uh, and again, they fell down in some pretty remote locations in, uh, in, the, in the Northwest and, of course, over Lake Michigan. So it could take us a while to actually reach the debris, let alone have a chance to collect it and analyze. It. Probably not from China. We don't know, George. Uh, it could it could be from a nation state. They could be from commercial entities, uh, research science scientific institutions. We just don't know. So what's going on right now? We had years and years where we apparently we did not detect. At least that's what spokespeople have said. We did not detect Chinese balloons flying into the United States, into United States yeah. airspace. Now we're catching all these objects and shooting them down. Is there more of a threat, or are we just detecting more? And if we're detecting more, why? There's two things here. One, uh, we have been studying the Chinese spy balloon program since we came into office. This is a program that they have been working on for several years. Uh, so they have ramped up their uh, abilities. They have ramped up their deployment of, of these balloons uh, over just recent years. So that is fairly, fairly soon. Uh, and then because of the spy balloon, we changed some of the radar parameters for our air defense capabilities, particularly over the northern uh, part of our hemisphere. Uh, and uh, it is possible that in part because of tweaking the radar sensitivity, uh, we are simply seeing more objects right now. What more can you tell us about the parts of the payload of the Chinese spy balloon that have been recovered? We had some good weather over the weekend, George. They were able to bring up uh, some parts of the debris, some of the, even of the, uh, the structure of the payload itself. Uh, some of those uh, include some of the electronics. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail, but we are starting to get things uh, up off the bottom of the ocean there uh, up and uh, and try to get it uh, try to get it analyzed by the FBI. Weather was not permitting yesterday. We'll see what it goes today uh, if the sea state will permit uh, divers to get uh, down there. Yeah, are the Chinese going to have to shut down this spy balloon program now that we've discovered so much about their capabilities? I, I can't speak for the Chinese, George. I don't know what they'll do with this. This is a program that they've been working on for several years. Uh, they are trying to exploit this particular part of the uh, of the atmosphere for surveillance purposes. Uh, but we studied it very, very hard. We were able to do some forensics and reverse engineering to uh, previous flight paths that that weren't detected in previous years. Uh, and this is and we briefed Congress. We briefed Congress in a classified setting back in August about this program. Uh, so we're going to keep studying it, keep uh, keep trying to learn from it. And because we were able to shoot this balloon down uh, in waters off the Atlantic. Now we've got that debris. We'll be able to learn even more about this particular platform. As you know, the Chinese just said the U.S. has sent 10 spy balloons over China. I assume the United States does spy on China. Do we send balloons? We do not deploy surveillance balloons over China. And do we spy over China? We do not deploy surveillance balloons over China, George. John Kirby, thanks very much. Rob